All right, brand new edition of the Winning Plays podcast. And boys and girls, we have a special one for you right now. It's the reunion pod. Rich Levine, paging in from the West Coast. Michael Pina, paging in from Brooklyn, fresh with a new job, entering fatherhood, just like all sorts of things to talk about. Gentlemen, it's a pleasure to see your faces. Thanks, thanks for coming back on here. I like that we have a mic and then you lost your mic. All right, listen. <laughs> We're rolling with the punches here today. Yeah. It's a better replacement. I'll take this mic over my mic. <laughs> it's great to see you guys. Great to have amazing to see. Amazing to see all of you. So exciting. A um, lot of lot of changes in life. You know, things are yeah. happening. There's good a lot of stuff. A lot of good changes with this group. I feel like Celtics. There have been other changes too. We can get to those later. Um, but first, we need to talk about Mike's big change of rate joining the Ringer. As of is it two weeks now, Mike? Uh, like three, I think. Three ish, yeah. And Mike has already had plenty of great stuff on the Nets melting down, which we'll get to in a second. Zion Williamson and the Pelicans, and you can listen to him regularly on the Ringers collection of pods, NBA pods. So, um, I know I have already. So, Mike, it's just it's great to see the meteoric rise uh, continuing um on the national stage if you have to actively Thank root against the nets now because not root against them but like the chaos is good that's good for business isn't it <laughs> i don't i don't know um it's kind of like disgusting is, is how i would describe it but um and like yeah you guys know me like i just i personally like talking and watching and thinking about basketball more so than um, anti-Semitism pl players that are, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, pro Hitler propaganda. That's really not uh, my bag personally. So it's, uh, but ge yeah, generally um, it's been a lot of fun so far, very early on. And I'm really excited for this season. It's already, it feels like the season is like six months old. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah, there's been that much storylines from a Celtics perspective in the in the in these six weeks to last, uh, I think, six months here. So, um, well, I'll throw it to you guys here. I'll, I'll throw it to Rich. Rich is usually the voice of direction for this for this wow. podcast in the past, and hopefully, once more. So we'll we'll go to him here. Like, where where do you want to go, Rich? Right now, we have, we have the we have the Emilio Doka situation. Okay. Uh, whether it's him going to the Nets or just the Celtics, Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown had some pretty eye opening quotes on. Uh, that decision yesterday so we can go there or we can just go we can start with the team seven so games my, in the year but we're my gonna question go. my question for the two guys who are very plugged in this is great i'm a little rusty it's 8 a.m out here um <clears throat> it's, a, it's an honor to get to talk to two guys who are so connected do either you know what like the details details of what happened with ema not reliably i can i can tell on pina's face that he does he might, <laughs> he might not say so mike without giving too much there's a good reason he'll never coach the Celtics again. I would say I don't a hundred percent know what happened. I just know from, you know, things that you hear, I'm sure you guys have heard things. Yeah. Right. Um, Two women, both married, was told to stop. didn't stop pursuing potentially like that's where it got a little, a little iffy. I would say just generally I'm surprised that another organization after however many weeks it's been since this became public would pursue Ime Udoka as their head coach, particularly one that is just, I mean, it's like a PR disaster after disaster after disaster on a daily basis with the Brooklyn Nets. So for them to bring in Ime, and I was at Sean Marks Presser, you know, he's asked pointedly, like, how can you, basically, how can you bring in Ime Udoka given the scandal that has erupted in Boston and what's going on in your own organization. And he denied that they were going to hire Ime, just said he didn't know who the coach next <laughs> head coach would be, but also said that they um, vet everyone who comes in the organization and take a long look at uh, whoever they hire's prior relationships was a part of his quote. And I was just like, <laughs> okay <laughs> that might take that might take some time with you man <laughs> you guys are a total joke um yeah i I'm, I'm just surprised that he is potentially going to be back in the league as quickly as this on another team it's all just very bizarre um 
and I, I I don't really know what else to say. It's just a really strange situation, and I at first I don't think it's going to work for Brooklyn or for him, frankly. Either way, yeah. But B Rob, do you think that 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 Marcus and Jalen know the details, or they just know what's sort of been kind of vaguely described to the public? Yeah, which... I'm sure they've every you know have second, third hand you know accounts of you know hearsay. Um, I don't know if they're talking to, to Matt Barnes about it um, based on what, you know, his quotes about the situation where weeks ago, but no, it's clear that, I mean, more than anything else. And this was the, the case on media day. And it was the case yesterday. Is that like, they, they're hurt by it. They, those are like, you know, they're big fans of Emei and Jalen, I think was actively part of like getting Emei hired in the first place. And I'm sure smart was part of that equation too last year. So when, you know, they think they have a good thing going with their head coach and went to the finals and, to see that kind of taken away from them um, without knowing all the details, you understand that perspective of them being upset about it. But I do think that whether the Celtics need to pull these guys aside at some point, when this all becomes done with, you know, when Emi is officially out the door, they can, you know, kind of sit them down and explain things more fully if they're allowed to do that. I'm not sure if they are for, for legal reasons, or it's a fact that, Hey, Jalen Marcus, listen, this is Emi's fault here. That this is like, if you guys don't want to be mad at anyone, be mad at Emi for making obviously a pretty big number of mistakes here to get to a point where he, the Celtics clearly had to suspend him indefinitely. And I mean, let's put it note, like there was a 0% chance he was going to come back here next year. Like when, when the team released a statement to, to, to spend Ime for the year indefinitely, and they wouldn't even, and Ime had to release his own statement on his own, like not even through the team there that said it all for me like last month. So he did have Woj also to, to release all his statements. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, so let's, um, it, it's, you'd think that over the course of time, Marcus and Jan will kind of, you know, reason or just come to terms with that. But this is still, bottom line here is this, this is, this is Emei's fault. And, um, and now it's the Joe Mazzulla era officially. Officially, well, he's still the interim head coach. Interim. They never had a press conference for him either. Like they never even announced in the release that he was the interim head coach. So I wonder how they, if they do anything to, to change that officially or not here as we move forward. Um, but clearly this is, this is his job to lose until further notice, which is, I don't can know. I like, what, throw this, yeah, can I throw this out there? Um, I think Joe Missoula has done a, first of all, it's really disturbing to me that I'm older than Joe Missoula. <laughs> like my, my man, the day get, I used be, to it. get used to I it. I know the day I became <laughs> older than the head coach of the Celtics. I was not expecting it to hit this soon. Life comes at you very fast. I will say, um, you know, if it doesn't work out this season, I don't know what the internal expectations are. I guess the internal expectations are to make a deep playoff run, go to the finals, win the championship. If they fall short of that, the one head coach out there who's kind of been slipping under the radar, who's incredible, um, who I think would be wonderful in Boston is Quinn Snyder. I'm just going to throw that name out there. No reporting whatsoever. Mm. Um, just I'm, <laughs> I'm interested in in that as a possibility at some point if Missoula doesn't work out. But he deserves every opportunity, too. And he's done a pretty good job so far. I mean, they have one of the best offenses in the NBA. Do you, uh, Rich, to- right, like, Coach Ray has in this, like, would – would dropping Mozula after this year, though, if they same thing, you know, they flame out, they have a bad first round exit, will like, you know, casting them aside there, do you, would that risk something with the players to be like, okay, you guys lost Ime, you brought in this guy that we know pretty well and Joe we like, but obviously that, if that doesn't work out for no reason, do they feel, do you feel like that's a point of concern or gives him more reason to say, okay, we're going to give Joe an extra year here as opposed to uh, a fresh or obviously a more proven face like uh, Snyder? Yeah, I mean, well, first of all, let me say that I, I'm older than Jason Tatum's mom. <laughs> so don't, don't feel bad. Mike. Okay, I feel a lot better. I feel better. Um, okay, Grandpa. <laughs> se- second, um, she was also a grandmother at like 36, but I'm older than Jason Tatum's mom. That's the fact. Um, so if Missoula doesn't work out, and I think we're jumping the gun a little bit. No, I mean, this, like, is, like, this is... he's. He has done nothing in my mind to to not keep this. I don't necessarily know if like an older, rigid, white coach with like, I mean, everyone's got a few skeletons if you if you live long enough, but Quinn's got some skeletons that maybe match up a little bit with with <laughs> with, 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 with emails potentially. I don't know if that is the the right mix for me for right now. I don't even want to think about the next coach. I want to think about Joe Mazzula. He's got this year at least. Um, and he's got one of the best teams in the East. 
he's got a team right now. Like, you know, we, we can, we can nitpick what happens against the Cavs. Like they could have won both those games. I think that was really Donovan Mitchell being the best player on the court when it mattered. And the two losses to Cleveland, I think. Certainly Friday night. Yes. Mike, what do you think? Uh, yeah, this is actually a topic that I wanted to broach with you guys as like big picture, um, just a conversation starter. But I've been thinking about it for a few days. I think right now, Jason Tatum is the most complete basketball player in the NBA. I had that written. T- two way players. Where does he rank in the, among the best two way players in the league? I want to get. I just want to get your thoughts on that. See if you think it's crazy. If it, I don't think it's crazy, but like just. Who is even else in that conversation to compete with him? And I don't, I'm not saying he's the best player in the league. I'm saying he has the fewest flaws among all stars right now. And I well, it's thought human, it's like just, him and Giannis, right? Is that like, I feel like for this season? I feel like that, that that's the guys in the conversation. For the, sure. The and weeks. Giannis, we we know what Giannis. I'm talking when I say Tatum being complete. I mean like elite three level scorer he's passing the vision is there he's rebounding his defense is I mean it's all defensive team caliber like last night it was um but it was a show like he doesn't play that well in every game but he's a very very good defender on a what normally is a very good defense um the block on Mitchell was insane like that was it was, it was it was great he had a chase down earlier like he he's just I just think he's he's amazing and yep. he's taking this other leap right now that is it's early in the season, but he's just I, I just don't know how many guys are better beyond like Jokic, Giannis, Luca, Steph. Like name me another obvious player who's better than Jason Tatum. I I, I can't do it. But again, if you're talking total package, I mean take Luca and Steph out they they're they're below Tatum if you're if you're factoring in defense, right? In the complete player discussion, yes, that's that's yes, exactly. I would say that. And I also love and this. This this goes to sort of the physical nature of his game this year, like getting to the foul line more than ever and shooting more than over ninety percent from the foul line. Yeah, it's a really I mean, good point, Rich. Like, I mean, seven attempts per game already. That has to be. I want to say probably top five in the league. Without looking at it, it has to be top five to top ten in the league total. And that was probably one of the last pieces of his game that was missing it's like getting there consistently and he's showing that this year he's i think his shot selection has been better than ever this year as a whole and to me though this is not to put like a a damper on it but like for him to be playing at this level and for the celtics to be four and three to start the year is like ah like that's not like it's a huge deal given you know the landscape of the eastern conference right now a lot of teams have gone off the worst starts in the celtics here but like this is about as good as you're going to get from Tatum right now. And, and they still have, you know, lost a couple games. They should have won in crunch time and we'll see if that matters down the road, but it's uh, it's hard to ask anything more of Tatum right now, based on what you're seeing. Are, do you guys have a, like, where are you on the wary meter, the concern meter on a one to 10 scale with the Celtics? 10 is 10 is freaking out. 10 is the sky is falling. Uh, I'm like, I'm like a two. I'm not even approaching. Yeah. I'm not approaching anxiety. No, it's, it's like a three, two or three, like for, from, from my side, I, in my mind though, it's just like, you're, you're making stuff hard for you down the road with like losing games like you have. And I think, I guess my biggest concern right now is still the crunch time stuff is it never went away fully last year. It's been back in these two games against Cleveland where you have a, probably a better proven, you know, crunch time guy at the end of Mitchell um, that has had his way a couple of times against you. And then whether it's smart taking shots when he shouldn't or Jalen forgetting to call timeout after getting a rebound with three seconds left in the game. Um, like just the, those, that kind of decision-making stuff. It's like, Oh, we're learning how to win. Like Joe was saying that kind of stuff, which you get that that's like, he's obviously not going to be calling anyone out after a game, but it's like, no, you guys know how to win now. You're, you're a finals team. This shouldn't be stuff that comes up again and again and again, you know, at this stage of the process. Can I ask a quick question on that Jalen timeout? I was a lot going on in my house when that, when that happened. <laughs> I, was someone so, sick? Well, yeah, it's different kinds of sick, but um, so he did. I, I know everyone's freaking out. He didn't call the timeout immediately, but then they still got side out. 
they called two timeouts there. They didn't say in the time. broadcast. So like they called a second timeout to advance it. So they had the the first okay. timeout was they got it under the basket and then they called another one to get it. Uh, gotcha. Luckily. I missed I missed the second one. So so okay. So you wasted a timeout. But like for me, that the the Marcus like that was that was done by Jalen. Like maybe you can see him getting carried away on the road and all that. He still should know. But the, the Marcus Smart shot, and maybe it's just on the heels of you know a few years of of bad Marcus Smart shots. But that 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 one really bothered me. Would I, I, really? I, I I I saw B Rob's clip and I was like, B Rob, back on the bullshit. Oh, whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> You're gonna def- defend that shot right now. You do get a little aroused when when Mark. I mean, no, like, this is I've been banging this drum for like eight years. So like, yeah, obviously, if you if you put out some live bait for me, I'm gonna go for it. But that was that was egregious. <laughs> Defend that uh, shot, you know. Mike. Defend that shot. You know, I mean, clearly he thought he was fouled, and if you look, but at is he going to? He's never going to get that call. Is like that oh, needs to be the most uh, important uh, thing now. He's I, never going to get that call I, on a jump I shot. Know, but I don't know about all that. I mean, he probably was fouled. Like if you look back on it, Donovan Mitchell does have his arm like when he goes up. Yeah. He he senses the contact. He goes up. I feel like that's a call watching the NBA that is whistled eight times out of 10. I get what was going through his head. And frankly, he drew the foul on the possession previous on Jared Allen to give them that the ball right there. So I'm just saying like, it's Marcus. Like we're uh, how, like, it's just, this is who he is. Like, let's just. Well, I, like, I, I get that part. No. Right. He's not, not saying change. he's post criticism, but like this is just like who he is, and you just got to take the good with the not well, so good. Here's my question: I agree. Like this is this is, it's like a to a far lesser degree of like a Russ Westbrook situation. Like he is what he is, the good and the bad. There's obviously far more good than bad with Marcus. I, I as you referred to those charges last night, he took like he got him in that spot. But here's my thing: now this off season, you got a guy named Malcolm Brogdon to like maybe take the onus off these situations. And maybe could be in the game in that spot. So you have, oh, it's not Marcus Smart driving the lane while shooting, I don't know, 33% from the field this season uh, as a I whole. I would agree there. I, like, I looked at All I time mean, out, I get was, Brogdon in the game. Yeah, when I was just watching the game, I was kind of curious as to Brogdon's minutes and if that was intentional for health-related reasons and trying to manage his minutes for a long season. I don't know. Um I was that was a little curious to me, and then you see what did he only play like 24, 25 minutes last night? I think, yep. um, and was like pretty good in those minutes. So, I that was a little strange to me, and I feel like he should be in most crunch time lineups. Um, I don't know if it's instead of Marcus Smart, but he should be in crunch time lineups. And I think Grant was getting those minutes, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, and Grant was okay for sure, but and the Cavs were playing big, so I get all that, but. Um, yeah, Brogdon. I would like to see Brogdon on the floor when it mat- when it matters, and that's why they brought him in. You're right. You're exactly right. And that's what's crazy too, B Rob. You talk about Tatum being what he has been, that the fact that they're that they're only four and three. Like Grant Williams has been as good as you probably yep. could expect. Uh, Derek White has been fucking unbelievable. Um, Eleven, four and a half, four point two, shooting forty well, more than forty percent from three. Um, I mean, right now, I mean, you look at it, like you have, you got Brogdon, you got white, you got smart. If you're, <laughs> I know this happens every year with Marcus, right? We say this and then, but he, you have two proven players there. I with you, Rich. Like why, why isn't white and Brogdon in that game to end the game? If like they're playing better than smart this season, which they are. Well, they, I would they just certainly say are. If both of them were in the game, instead of smart, Jared Allen just gets the ball on the block post up dunk and one game over and we're all going home okay right? talking but about this. why we're, we're, but we're going could, could joe mazula could, could joe mazula <laughs> call a timeout after smart draws that charge and put him in the game joe mazula can obviously see into the future and he knew that jalen brown was going to screw it up and he needed two timeouts that's clearly what's <laughs> going on here come on come on my mistake my mistake that is that is some chess right there <laughs> that's a real advanced chess by mazula but yeah so that is I, that's one thing i'm watching i think more than anything else this year is that like the the late game the crunch time lineups there's a lot of options there to be had and i'm curious to see how that evolves over the course of time and whether white or brogdon find their way into that fold in place of smart or, or next to smart or if that just stays with status quo since obviously that's been the case so far i've got one other guy to worry about i want to throw out to you guys all right now mm. what do you think about al horford this season i've learned my lesson with al 
if he, I, I'm ready to wait. For, I'm, I'm ready to wait until the playoffs. I think that he is at the stage right now, 36 years old. Um, I'm not worried about November, December, January. I, if he's healthy, I think that he's going to do enough come playoff time. Um, I'm proud of you, Rich. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, you know, Hor- yeah, Horford is I'm I'm I mean he looks good. I don't know the numbers aren't like popping off the page. Shooting okay from behind the three point line, moving pretty well. Like I don't I'm not I, I I just honestly have a difficult time and I look I feel this way about a few teams that have struggled at the gate. Like what happened to like let's get concerned after 20 games. And also like I'm not saying you're concerned, but like like this team is just going to look so different when games matter. And I know it's a long regular season, but like, like Rob Williams coming back is going to make Al Horford look better. There's just like a lot of different things that are going to happen over the next few months that make it so that I can't get too worked up about um, statistics or how a player looks, even though I think Horford looks fine. From what I've Well, seen. here, here's the number I'm worried about for statistics, 31 minutes per game. Like that's more than less, like that's a lot. And for a guy that you're playing at center right now, especially last night against Cavs, like they played him 41 minutes in the regular season game. Like, I mean, I, this is stuff where if you want to say he's not coming off a half season off in OKC right now, you're obviously you're, you're in real big trouble if he ever gets hurt this year for a variety of reasons. And so I'm wondering again, you're, you're four and three and you're, you're running out, not to the ground, but like you're playing him, probably more than you should given like they said, have three like, days off they, they had two days though. off but they, they're playing three and four i mean i assume he's not playing one of the back-to-backs here this weekend but like i don't know like luke cornett played three minutes last night like it's yeah it's they saw luke, to... luke cornett was did it the last time they played the Cavs, though and that's i, I guess that was the issue but no I, th- I think like why why not dust off blake like right like you got you got you signed all these guys like get get Kevin Gelly up here. See what he give. See if he can play ten minutes to give you anything in one of these games. But yeah, it's like if you sign all these bigs off the bench, like keep Al's minutes down as much as you can, especially when he's when other guys are carrying you right now. I know, but at the same time, we talk about signing all these bigs, but then we're mentioning Luke Cornett. Yeah, right. like, <laughs> late thirties Blake Griffin. Like I know, I know, mean, Blake. It, it, Blake's been and, rough, and I love. I think Blake has a role. I think I think especially talk, talk again. You know, fast forward four or five months playoffs i think blake's gonna have a little bit of a role like when, when you get there but on the day-to-day right now and again cleveland's one of those teams where you would probably need to lean on al a little bit more than uh that's that's some, some yeah other yeah like that's that's probably as tough match we're gonna have in the east for for bigs who do you guys think is the second most important player on the celtics like who which guy if they're gonna reach their ceiling this year needs to simultaneously uh reach his ceiling Along Jaylen. with Jason Tatum. You think it's Jalen? It's still Jalen for me. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I'm with Rob, Mike. R- Rob is my wild card on that. Yeah, that, that's fair. I do think that, like, maybe he. But what part of Rob's game do you feel needs to um, evolve beyond the ability to stay on the court? Well, no, I, I don't. I, I, so it's more, it's more that it's, it's like Rob needs to be on the court and at his best. And, and it can be as good as it was last year. Right. I don't, I'm not saying we need to see like leaps and bounds from from Rob, but mm-hmm. you need you need the best case scenario of Rob Williams come playoff time for this team to do what it is capable of doing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's a perfectly good answer to that question, and he changes the whole complexion of the team and. I don't know how much their defensive woes are attributed to him not being healthy right now probably a lot um but when he gets back they'll just look they'll just look totally different he made them invincible last season (laughs) we've yet to see a a lob out of the half court (laughs) has there been one this year compared to five a half when rob is out there Uh, it's tough to think i think they may want on a fast break but definitely not in the half court i feel like that is that is grant williams and al Horford have not been getting up for those um, he just makes it, I mean, he's just going to make it so much better for like Brogdon, like oh yeah. ball hand, like he just makes the game so much easier for everyone. So I'm looking forward to whenever he comes back. 
small doses as a small doses but brogdon has been as advertised it's a it's a pleasure to watch that guy play yeah offensively just so smooth all right here's my question when it comes to rob williams and like the big situation down the line big picture for this group now the Celtics have these trade exceptions they also have a movable contract in Danilo Gallinari that you know that, that can be there for salary purposes do you feel like getting big man insurance for Al and Rob should be like the number one priority heading you know when they make a trade down the line here based on what you've seen out of this team so far or do you feel like there's another area of the roster you'd rather address with that no, we need, need a, a, a big that can defend and rebound and just be big. This is my thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, a big's big. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like, I feel like this team is super deep. And to me, at the end of the day, who are you getting where it even matters if, Rob goes down or if Horford has like a, a serious injury at the worst possible time. Like I feel like those two players are so unique and so valuable to how the Celtics play where it's like, who, like, who are you getting that can be right. a big, who he can either stretch the floor vertically, shoot threes or switch one through five or like, who, who is that person? I don't, I don't know. Chris Stapps Porzingis. <laughs> Well, I'll he give actually you a looks name. really good. I will no, he say. looks he looks he looks fantastic. Would you trade Marcus and um, I don't know and, and Gallo and Filler? No, I would I would not do that. But I'll, I'll throw a name uh, that on a team that's winning too much right now. What would you? What about some, this guy's not going to spread the floor for you, but he could certainly protect the rim. Hurdle in San Antonio, like that's an expiring that. contract. He's going to be available. We know San Antonio likes those first round picks. And not even – he's not even be a guy who's playing much in the playoffs, but it's more of like that's a guy you can win regular season games with so you can rest Al and Rob as much as possible for when you need the most to have that kind of, you know, you know insurance. A first for Pirtle? And Gallo's contract. He off Gallo's contract. You wouldn't do that? Uh, I would not do that personally. I, I would. So that's interesting because I thought you, you, you were kind of a, a, a Pirtle guy. Yeah, I thought you were a Pirtle guy, Mike. No, I, I do like Pirtle, but – I don't want to give up a first for someone who's not going to play in the playoffs. I don't care. Like, I'm not doing that. I just don't think that's smart. And and, he, and we don't think he, he can't, he's not a, his game does not align with, with NBA playoffs. I don't understand that. He seems like a guy that could contribute to me. Well, his lack of shooting. Sure. Right. There's nothing against Pirtle, but like you're, you guys are saying if Horford and Rob are healthy. Yeah. Like, like what, he, he plays 10 minutes, minutes a game. He plays 10 minutes a game in the playoffs. If that. Like, like Grant the right at matchup. the five. I like Grant at the five more than Pirtle. Like in the like foul Jakob. Like he, he shoots like what is it forty percent, thirty percent from the free throw line. Like yeah, that's not great. I just <laughs> like in, in a in a playoff series, I just feel like he'd be off the floor almost immediately. Like interesting. I d- I don't. His you playoff stats Steven in Adams Toronto were not year. great. Yeah, I mean the playoff stats in Toronto were never great for him. Um. He did play a lot in San Antonio and in, you know, in the 2019 playoffs, but uh, yeah, I, I see like the, the flaws. A, the flaws are pretty big there for a team that's like bled draft um, draft assets and draft picks over the past few years to like lose another one um, for someone who really won't isn't likely to contribute. And you just said 10 minutes a game. Like that's not really enough for me. And I don't like in the NBA finals, he's not (laughs) playing 10 minutes a game. So like, he's cool to like hack Giannis in a series and he's cool to like get destroyed or not, maybe not get destroyed, but like compete against Embiid potentially in a series. Like that's really cool to have him there and maybe don't have to double so much, but like, I just don't think that that's worth it personally. That's do you fair. think it's do you think it's it's uh, was it surprising to you at all and i guess we'll see how this shakes out even if it does shake out but that reportedly the celtics weren't gonna ask for anything to to let you may go i mean I, I guess i can understand them just being so ready to to wash their hands of having him even like technically on their payroll and that but like i don't know you think they maybe could could get a little bit from from the nets 
Yeah, the more, uh, more the adjusted. optics of it are interesting. Like, Mike, you feel like that's like getting something for a guy you suspended and you want to be gone with anyway, just like looks bad. I mean, the, I think the most you're going to get was like a second round pick. Um, oh, and is that. that like, is it worth that optics of that? But at the same time, then you have like, Marcus Smart coming to me like, I can't believe we're letting him go to the rival for nothing. Like, I guess that kind of fuels that viewpoint. But I mean, I'm not surprised that the if it's a second round pick or nothing, that's how this were probably like, here, go ahead. We don't have to pay out your contract. Like, see you later. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm not, I don't really, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you feel about know. the working theory that Brad Stevens is avoiding any uh, ridicule of his, of his draft picks by just trading every draft pick and never having to make one? Ooh. Is that a conspiracy theory? <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, I just started it. It is now. Yeah. I don't know. I, was just I don't know. A, I mean, taking some attention off of you may talk. I don't want to upset Mike. We'll have to see what JD Davidson <laughs> looks like in with the red claws. That'll be, that's put some of Brad's picks under the microscope there in number 55 picks. Oh man. Um, all right. I think we're gonna have to put a bow in it right there, guys. What do we have any, I mean, this is a lot of fun. It's great to see your face. Do we want to do a minute of, do we want to do a minute of dad talk before we wrap up here? Or, or does Rich have to go to, you have to go to dad uh, duty right now, right? No, no I, I have no dad duty right now. I have uh, gym duty. It's going to mm. work out. When you get to this wow. age, guys, it's very <laughs> important. It's very important to keep your body uh, the way mine looks right now, which is just like a <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it, this is like a desperation. It was, it's, it's, it's dad bod emergency. Like, I got to start <laughs> taking care of myself a little bit more. So, yeah, I have an uh, appointment at the gym in like five minutes. Boy. Yeah, had a boy. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hunting I'm, on. I'm I, th- I think on I could help personal well-being. Yeah, I think I could help in the front court if I can just lose 10, 15 pounds. <laughs> Spread five, <laughs> stretch five. I've seen you on the court, Rich. Um, all right. Well, thanks everyone for listening for this fun reunion pod. Make sure you're checking out. Mike get his new home on the Ringer going forward here make sure you're checking out rich's uh muscles as he works himself back in the shape here we're gonna we're gonna revisit this in a month rich we're gonna get an update on on the gym situation no i'm gonna i'm gonna post some some uh, topless shots on twitter <laughs> when i'm done today when, I, when i'm like really swole all right keep keep posting for that fall rich at rich underscore levine fall mike at michael v pina rate review subscribe to the pod and uh we'll be back with you guys next week 